Out of my mind, chapter 27. The next morning, Mom bounds into my room holding a newspaper. Good morning, my rock star. She greets me. Guess what? Rock star? She's tripping. I turn to look at her. My face says what? You're famous. Huh? She gets me out of bed, straps me into my chair, and unplugs the Betty Talker from the charger and hooks me up. Then she places the morning paper on top of it. There I sat, plastered, on the front page of the newspaper, in color. Wow, I type. The article is all about the team winning the competition, but yours is the only picture they used. Interesting. Why me? Mom smiles quickly. Because you are unique and wonderful and lots of more interesting than ordinary fifth graders, I guess, she says. The whole article seems to be focused on you. Team kids won't like that, I type. I'm sure they'll be happy for you, sweetheart. No, they won't. Here, listen to this. She reads me the article. Spotting Street Elementary's talented academic team of fifth and sixth graders won the local whiz kids quiz competition last night by a score of 86 to 85. With stunning skill and knowledge, they answered questions far above their grade level to defeat seven other teams. Makes us sound smart, I tap. And so you are, Mom replies. Math questions made me sweat. I get clammy under the arms just thinking about them. Mom continues, Ooh, here's the part about you. Listen to this. One outstanding member of the spotting team is Melody Brooks, an 11-year-old who has been diagnosed with cerebral palsy. In spite of her physical challenges, Melody's quick and capable mental abilities were able to shine as she led her team to victory. They will hate me, I type glumly. Butterscotch, who still sleeps in my room, nuzzles my hand. She always seems to know how I feel, but it doesn't help this time. Oh, don't exaggerate. I think it's a lovely article, and your friends should be proud. You don't get it. Mom ignores me and proceeds to get me ready for school. Two blue t-shirts, one to wear and one to pack, just in case. Two pairs of pants. She never picks out jeans. I decide not to argue. I have a feeling it is not going to be a good day. What a great photo of you. I'm going to make sure I get extra copies of the paper. She chatters cheerfully as she tugs on my socks before putting on my sneakers. I've got to make sure everybody at work sees this. Dad has finished dressing Penny, so he brings her into my room. When Penny notices my picture in the paper, she drops Doodle and shouts, Dee Dee! She picks up the paper and kisses it. I bet I won't get many reactions like that at school today. Dad leans over and gives me a kiss on the cheek. I'm so proud I could pop, he says softly. I love you, Melody. That makes me get all teary. Just once, I wish I could hug my little sister or tell my dad I love him too. In real words, not through a machine. The reaction at school today is just what I expected. Words float out of lips that say nice things to me, but eyes tell the truth. The eyes are cold as if I had beat the reporter over the head and forced her to print that picture of me. Even Rose acts distant. Nice picture of you in the paper, Melody, she says. Thanks. Should have been all of us. I think so, too, Rose replies. I just sigh. I can't do anything right. I don't want to be all that. I just want to be like everybody else. When we get to Mr. Deming's class, he strides in wearing another brand new suit. There must have been a two-for-one sale and a brand new smile. He looks like he might explode with happiness. He carries a stack of the morning newspaper with him. I didn't sleep at all last night, he admits to us. I'm just so very proud of our team and our school. He pauses while the last class cheers for the quiz team. Or excuse me, while the class cheers for the quiz team. Rose, Molly, and Claire smile happily. Connor and Rodney take bows. A few kids even turn around and look at me with a smile. Do we get free pizza or something? Connor blurts out. Absolutely, Mr. Deming replies. The principal has declared that next Friday is quiz team day and the entire school is being treated to free pizzas and sodas. More cheers from the class. Connor looks really pleased. Mr. Deming continues, and I want to give a special shout out to Melody, who really helped us secure our victory. Let's give her a special round of applause. He begins the clapping and the class joins in but it seems more polite than sincere. I guess I'm not as cool as free pizza. 
Who saw the 11 o'clock news last night? Mr. D asks, still beaming. About half the kids raised their hands. I had missed it. I had fallen asleep, exhausted, after we had got home. I taped it and T-bowed it and put it on my MySpace, he tells us excitedly. But now we must get back to regular class activities. He sounds disappointed. But how do we get ready for Washington? Rose asks, obviously not ready to let him do that. Teachers are so easily distracted. I knew he'd bite on that one. Mr. Deming smiles again and takes a deep breath. We have only two weeks to get ready, Rose. I've prepared a packet for each of my team champs, he says, as he passes out the paperwork. Take this home and bring it back tomorrow without fail. In it, I've included information about how to redeem the free plane tickets and info about our hotel and schedule for the days we are in D.C. It also gives details about our practice schedule, which begins today. We will meet every day after school and a half day on Saturday. Saturday? Connor asks, disbelief in his voice. I'm worried about that too. A whole half day? If Catherine can't come, how will I get to the bathroom or eat? I'll bring bagels for breakfast, fruits for snacks, and we'll order in burgers for lunch, Mr. Deming tells him. Sounds sort of healthy, Connor responds with a grin, but I'll be there. You skip a practice and you get bounced to the alternates, Connor. I'm in this to win. Why don't you take a couple of days off, my man, Rodney says to Connor. I'd be glad to take your place. Slide you right out in a blink. He sounds serious. No way, man. I'll show, Connor says hurriedly. Molly raises her hand. Mr. Deming, do the alternates go to Washington also? Absolutely. So should I buy a new dress just in case I get to be on the team? That's up to you, Molly, the teacher replies. Claire raises her hand then. Mr. D, I think I know what Molly's getting at. Since there are six people on the DC team instead of four, which of the alternates will you choose? We will use a point system, he replies. The students with the six highest scores from all our preliminary rounds will make the final TV team. Sound fair? Claire looks satisfied at that, and she and Molly high-five each other. Mr. Deming finally gets back to regular classwork, the study of Spain and Portugal, and I do my best to do nothing to call attention to myself. No weird noises or kicks or grunts for the rest of the class. No answers to questions I know. I just sit in the back of the room with Catherine and hope the morning will pass quickly. I spend the afternoon in room H5, where we watch Tom and Jerry cartoons for three hours. Can you believe it? After school, Catherine feeds me a pudding cup and some juice just before it's time to go to Mr. Deming's room for our first practice. She frowns as I finish my last sip of juice. What's bugging you, Melody? She asks. You should be on top of the world, but you're acting like somebody just popped you on the nose. They don't want me on the team, I type. That's ridiculous. You were the star last night. That's the problem. Without you, they would not have won. They're scared of me, I try to explain. They think I look funny. You never let that bother you before, she counters. It's hard to put my feelings into words that will come out right on my talker. I know the other kids are uncomfortable with me on the team. There's no other way to put it. My presence was cute at first, maybe okay for a local competition, but for the big game on national television, that's different. I'll make them stand out and not in a good way. I start typing again. I make them look, I hesitate, then type in, weird. You're the smartest person on the team, Catherine exclaims. I drool. So pack a box of tissues. I make funny noises. And Connor farts sometimes. I have to smile at that. No more of this feeling sorry for yourself, young lady. Let's get down to Mr. D's room and kick some butt. Okay, let's go. I type. We roll down to the room and I hold my head high. Well, at least as high as I can when it isn't wobbling around. Nobody says anything more about the newspaper article and practice goes on as usual. I answer most of the questions correctly, and by the time Mom picks me up, I feel a little better. But I do notice Rose and Claire and Molly whispering together as I leave. It could be about a new music video, or a shopping trip to the mall, or it could be about me.